And now we're going to bring up Nilsa Ruiz and Rosa Julia from Chicago Growth Mindset to talk to us a little bit about the work that they do as well and um, what you can expect from the trainings that they're going to be offering through this program as well. Thank you, Courtney and Nicole. Buenos dias, everybody. Good afternoon. My name is Rosa Julia Garcia Rivera, and I am one of the co-owners of Chicago Growth Mindset. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Buenos dias. My name is Nil Ruiz, and I'm also the co-founder of Chicago Growth Mindset. Thank you for having us today. We're excited to tell you a little so bit about- My goal is to really- Go ahead, Nelson. Please, go ahead. No, I was just going to start by telling you a little bit about our organization, uh, a little bit about what we do and the services that we'll be providing to this amazing group here today. Uh, CGM specializes in integrating wellness programs into a diverse workplace setting. Nilsa and I have a long history in the nonprofit world, and in any organization that really is a people organization, we understand that the happier and the more stable employees are, the bigger the impact in the communities that you're serving. And so we really work on bringing in those services to different workplace settings from uh, workshops that you all will be experiencing, from coaching. We also have additional comprehensive services that we'll talk to you a little bit about uh, later in our little short presentation for individuals and families. Thank you, Rosa. We also inspire confidence and better resilience so you can see true impact in your investment. Sort of what Courtney and Nicole mentioned is that collaboration, but also really understanding that we want to give you, be able to provide you those resources, but also knowing that you know more about the community that you serve. You know more about what is going on with the, with the work that you do. So our goal is to make this a conversation, but also giving you the tools to really practice those those skill sets. Um, our vision is really making sure that we capture and achieve mental wellness with dignity and respect and in, and in overall their emotional well-being, a healthy community. We're excited to be partnering with Ingenuity knowing that this collaborative could become national, knowing that there's different partnerships and really introducing you to the skills that you already have, but really putting more portray on that. Rosa. I think you're still up. I think you're gonna, we're gonna tell you a little bit more about ourselves yeah. and our experience. Thank you. So a little bit my, about myself. I think it's important as we talk about some of this collaboration, getting to know you and the work you do, is that you also feel comfortable with your facilitators, comfortable to know that we are here a phone call and email away, but also having that part, that connection that really guides us to the work that we do. Um, as you know, I am the co-founder of Chicago's Mindset, that's 10 years of experience, social service and advocacy, what this looks like is working with different partnerships and this common ground to really help the communities that we serve and we're really building some of that resilience and that co, that um, the co factors really help some of that. We are, um, one of my own practitioners is just being a racial healing practitioner where we talk to different partners all over the city and just really talk about equity and how to really impact some of the things that we do. My background is from Loyola University. Uh, my specialization was LDSS, which stands for Leadership Development and Social Services. As we know, mental health is such a big impact, but sometimes what we forget about is how our community is affecting those impacts, our community is affecting some of those mental health. So we try to do some of these things, not only internally, but also in a macro lens, we could able to adapt some of that stuff. A little bit personal about me, I, um, I am married to a Spanish teacher. For those who are here who are working with CPS, I, I hear your struggle and I want to say just thank you for all the work that you do because I'm part of that and I see it. Um, and I have a one-year-old son who loves music. So the moment Courtney and Nicole was telling me about the arts and what this means, I automatically thought, how do I make sure that CGM becomes a blueprint to the future, becomes a blueprint to some of the things that we're trying to do here as a collaborative. Um, this work means so much to all of us. We were here with Courtney and, and Nicole months ago just talking about what this means and how to start and, and how to really become some of this. And what they really explain is just these are people who, these are individuals who are so invested in the work that we do, so invested in the work that you do. So how to really instill some of that. We're excited for that. I am a daughter of a single mother and a family member of full of essential workers. My mom works in the hospital. My brother's a police officer. 
Um, so I know those who are coming into work every single day and putting in all the practices and making sure that we're still going every day. We are excited to be here. We're excited for you to see our workshop, to get to know us, to get to know me, and always know that we are available. Thank you. And now I'm going to pass it to my co-founder, my partner in crime, that's you, Rosa. Uh, I'll, I'll keep it short. Um, I definitely want you to know that you are in good hands, tell you a little bit about the experiences that we have so that you feel comfortable um, as we move on this journey together. I have 25 years of clinical experience. Um, my focus has been children and adolescents. Um, I've de been designing mental health programs for the last 20 years. A lot of the programs, our mental health programs are in different CPS schools. Uh, I've been happy to be a school counselor. Part of designing my programs, I wanted to be in the school, um, in the school community to assure that the programs that I was designing were being implemented and were working. Um, so I was excited to be a part of that team and recognize how hard that all of you work every day to reach the families that we serve. Uh, 15 years as a gang and crisis responder. I was able to complete a two-year capstone at Georgetown University School of Nonprofit that was for uh, leaders of color, serving communities of color, really worked on organizational effectiveness, uh, building up my competencies in, in fundraising and grant writing. Um, a little bit about myself, I think that's important to know um, as well as I'm also the daughter of immigrant parents. I am a former gang member and a trauma survivor. Uh, what makes me so excited about this partnership with Ingenuity is I'm also the recipient of after school arts program. Um, and I really believe that it's what saved my life. I sang, I dance. Um, and, you know, I was sharing with Courtney and Nicole that I don't think any of my dance or, or choir instructor, instructors were trauma informed. And again, I'm not going to date myself, but this was over 30 years ago. But they had natural abilities to reach me and to be able to work with my body, to be able to be creative with art really allowed me to express my own trauma and move beyond that and be able to be the person that I am today. So excited to be here with all of you and tell you a little bit about what we do. Um, before we jump into this though, Courtney and Nicole, I wanted to get to know everybody in this group. Uh, Nilsa and I have designed a really short poll, things that we find extremely important uh, don't be afraid. These are not psychological exam. Um, Nilsa and I, although we have a lot in common, we are extremely different. Correct. Um, and uh, very different personalities. So we got a couple questions for you there. Would you rather be too busy or too bored? <laughs> I love to keep busy. I don't like to sit idle. Um, and I, I don't. I don't mind being bored. I don't mind hanging. I don't know if watching TV for six hours is boredom or self care, but I like to just sit there and hang out. So that's that's me there. Um, Can't do dishes. Hate dishes, but I'm okay with laundry. I love laundry. It's okay. Before my one year old, I used to do laundry once a month, and I used to be proud of that. And now I do laundry at least every three days. Um, so I'm gonna go with dishes. And I have a dishwasher, one, two, three, and we're all set. So I'm a dishwasher. Zoomer phone call. I'm that person who's going to Zoom you and pop up. I'm gonna Teams you. You may not have your hair done, but I love to connect. I love to see people. We live in this virtual world. So if I can't even see your face, <laughs> I struggle. So I'm a, I'm a Zoom girl. Call me, call me. I just told you I'm watching TV. You don't need to see me. <laughs> Um, I like let's just have a phone call if it's serious definitely we could do a zoom or crisis but feel free to call me at any time I love to drive I can't be the passenger uh, I'm gonna be that passenger driver that's annoying and putting on the brakes you ever see one of those who puts on the fake brakes that's me I, I need to see driver. <laughs> I like being the passenger. My goal is one of the things I do when I am the passenger is ask for permission. Can I use the radio? Can it be my playlist? Like, you know, do we connect, put my window down, put my window up? So I really like, you know, people watching. So I being the passenger. Rich or loyal friend? I fought Nilsa on this. I like friends that are rich and loyal if they exist. <laughs> rich or loyal friend? What do you choose? Wow, you just pick both. You just pick both. I think, I think <laughs> you can't pick both. You got to make a choice, everybody. Both. I think I could do both. I could do both, but I am in need of rich friends. So if you know anyone that's you know interested in my loyalty, please let me know, and I'm here for that. 
Uh, I love cake. I got to have cake. Cookies are all right, but I'm a cake kind of girl for sure. Cookies, if it's a cake, it's a big cake and it's there for a few days and then I feel like I got to eat it. A cookie is a one and done kind of thing, so I prefer cookies. I want to be invisible. I want to be, I want to be that fly on the wall. Uh, but flying sounds pretty cool. But here I chose being invisible. i rather fly, knowing that I could be here in my house right now in an hour, maybe be in Puerto Rico, because I flew my way over there. <laughs> sounds really amazing. So let me just fly my way without paying for, for, for an air flight. <laughs> All right, then finally, oceans and mountains. I will take the beach and the oceans any day of the week. I am definitely, uh, I'm a cancer by sign, so I'm a water sign. I'm cool with both, I'm cool with both, but what we really wanna know is where is your polling? How do you guys um, agree with us? I'm curious who's gonna dive to more. Nicole, can you share some of these polling answers for us? Who are we dealing with? Ah, all right, so 70% wanna be too busy out there we got laundry folks right. in the house ah, some people that that. Too. my arts crowd we like to connect be together oh i see everyone preparing Seven. a cookie i agree i agree and let's loyalty over together. money i love that loyalty over money i love you guys so that that speaks to all of you um cookies we got some cookie monsters out here and then flying by far, Nils, you got flyers with you. A few of us want to be invisible. You got people with you, Rosa. I see people who prefer the ocean. Thank you, everyone, for really getting to do these polls. We're really excited to meet you. And now we have a little bit of understanding of who you are. So we're hopeful to continue this relationship. What you're going to see here is just a list of some of the things that we do um, at, C at CGM Chicago's Mindset. We provide individual therapy. One of our goals is to really also not do this collaborative field workplace, which Los Angeles will talk about, but also really focus on that one-on-one -on -one coaching, group therapy, family therapy, marriage, couples therapy, any of those type of therapy we do provide. We understand that we are living through a pandemic and we're all going through this together. There's so much going on just with health scares and, and just with so many stuff. So know that not only we're here for this collaborative work, but you can also reach for any of your individual needs. So our focus is working with individuals with high stress. But as I mentioned in the beginning, our goal is also to bring workplace services, just like what Ingenuity is doing. Uh, we do crisis and trauma response. And so that if your workplace has been affected by a trauma, that can look like a, a loss on your team. It can look like workplace violence. We are a, a crisis and trauma response team. Uh, Psychological capacity building workshops, we're excited to be bringing that to you. We have a large uh, library of different workshops that we offer. Uh, love to do team building and staff retreats. It's so important to make sure that we're taking care of each other and our team. We do professional consultation and coaching, uh, conflict resolution and mediation services. We do this, uh, you're going to be working and, and getting a, a kind of a trauma lens assessment through the work that we do here. We also work with organizations to understand the mental health needs, the mental wellness needs of your organization, and then co-create integrated mental wellness pro programs into diverse work settings. It's a little bit about who we are and what we do. We look forward to this journey together. Thank you, Courtney and Nicole. Ah, we got to know them. That was a, oh, finally, <laughs> you want to be in touch. This is our business information. We're excited that our website is up and coming. You'll be getting that link soon. Um, our name says it all. We really believe that our mindsets really determine our behaviors with our relationships and our success and failure. And so we really want to help you maximize the investment that you make on yourselves. And we look forward to working with you all on this journey. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nielsen. everyone. We look forward to it. Thank you. Okay, so that was fun. Um, next, you're going to meet Eileen Ladson, Jocelyn Vega, and Candice Manciel from the Illinois Collaboration on Youth. And they're once again going to Turk, talk, Turk, talk about some of the work that they do and um, what they're bringing to this project. So give it away. Hi, Courtney. Thank you so Hi. much. I appreciate it. Also, that was so much fun. Chicago Growth Mindset, I love that. I love all of that. So much fun, thank you. 
Um, so hi everybody, my name is Eileen. I am a program director with Illinois Collaboration on Youth. A little bit about me. Um, I originally a marriage and family therapist, so I like to tell people I'm a professionally trained systems thinker. Um, and so I'm joined here by two of my colleagues, and so I'll, I'll let them introduce themselves as well. So I don't know, Candice, if you want to, or Jocelyn, if you want to introduce yourself. Sure, I can jump on in. So hi, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Candice Nassel. So I'm a trauma specialist for ICOI, specifically focused on the DHS contract. So what that means is most of my work, most of the training that I do, most of the technical assistance that I provide is for the youth serving programs that are funded through DHS throughout the state of Illinois, while I do do some special projects on the side as well. So that's me. And I'm Jocelyn, Candice and I work together as a dynamic duo as trauma specialists, um, but I specifically work with, you know, individual community groups that can be nonprofits, that can be coalitions. Um, and as a trainer, I really prioritize, you know, during the time where we're learning with each other, sharing information um, to create and have a safe environment. Uh, we're going to be talking about trauma and it can be traumatizing. So really knowing that in these trainings, you are the most important resource. You're the most important part of this experience. And as trainers, we're going to honor that and respect your time um, because you can be doing tons of things, right? Um, and we definitely want to keep you safe and supported when you're working with us. And I'm sure across our partners, they're going to be doing the same thing. Wonderful, thank you both so much. Um, so a little bit more about ICOI, just so you know who we are and kind of some of the background that we come from. ICOI was founded in the 1970s and we've kind of evolved since then and, and changed a little bit, but our mission has really always stayed the same, which is to champion the safety, health, and success of Illinois' children, youth, and families by acting as a collective voice for policy, practice, and by connecting and strengthening organizations that serve them. So what does that really mean? At our core, we like to say that ICOI is a membership organization. So we represent about 101 youth serving uh, member organizations throughout the state of Illinois. Everything from after school network programs to um, foster care programs and everything in between. We also have a policy and advocacy team out of Springfield where we work to champion things like a Medicaid Technical Assistance Center, building trauma-informed uh, school systems throughout the state, and supporting other trauma-informed initiatives um, as, re as related to legislation. And then we also do a lot of capacity building and technical assistance work as well, which is where our work as a trauma team falls in. So about what we do as a team, I know that Candace and Jocelyn kind of talked about it a little bit. One thing is that we offer a series of trainings and we're really excited to partner with Ingenuity, Illinois ACES, and Chicago Growth Mindset to be able to give so many different trainings and you'll be able to see the full um, kind of spread of all the trainings that we have as related to trauma, trauma-informed care, and not just what is trauma and how do we understand it, but things like talking about vicarious trauma, adding that kind of context that um, Bridget talked about before, or I'm sorry, Madison talked about before, where we talk about culture and trauma and we look a little bit more at community trauma and what that looks like. And then we also do things like capacity building and technical assistance. So through projects like this, we're able to help actually expand the capacity of youth service providers and their, um, I'm sorry, and service provider networks to be able to provide trauma-informed services to youth and care, as well as to be able to provide trauma-informed services to the staff as well. So as Jocelyn just mentioned, we believe that trauma-informed services aren't just about what is it that we can provide to the young people that we serve and support, but what is it that we can do to make sure that trauma-informed services also supports educators, staff, administrators, whoever it might be, because we recognize that trauma is really about a system of interactions as well. And then lastly, we also do a lot of technical assistance work where we provide um, examples and, and different resources to actually be able to provide and build on trauma-informed systems and what that looks like. So that's just kind of a roundabout way to talk about all the different things that we as a trauma team do and the work that we as ICOI do as well. So thank you so much and we're excited to be a part of this initiative.